but I'm going to invite our colleague um, Professor Leighton Andrews now to share with us um, his thoughts, his experience and potentially some challenges that we're going to be facing as as public servants, service and servants going forward. So Leighton, over to you, sir. The theme of what I'm going to talk about is never stop learning. And, and I was invited um, uh, by Owen to, to, to contribute after um, Owen and Lisa and uh, the chief executive, Paul Matthews, gave a, a presentation at Cardiff Business School before Christmas. So never stop learning is the theme. Um, and just to illustrate that this was is not something I've kind of just coined up for uh, this session, um, this is an extract from a speech I gave uh, when I was Minister for Education um, 11 years ago now. Uh, we were, it was a year after I'd outlined the reform programme for schools. Uh, and I had this kind of theme there um, of never stop learning at that time. Um, I might update my own learning uh, uh, ambitions these days. I've got a granddaughter in Copenhagen, so I'm uh, learning uh, a bit of Danish in order not so much to speak to her because we speak to her in Welsh, uh, but to be able to at least read a menu when I'm in uh, Copenhagen. I want to take you through quickly some history uh, and then uh, then a few observations uh, for the present. Um, many of you will remember something called the Williams Commission uh, into Public Services in Wales, which reported in 2014, nearly a, a decade ago. Um, it became very controversial because of what it said about council reforms, the structure of local government. But I think a couple of the most important comments within the report were actually about culture and leadership. Uh, and, you know, here we are, leadership, culture, change of values will be as important as any conclusions we've reached on structural change. The complexity of the challenges requires adaptive leaders. And we took that work on um, asking what kinds of leaders we wanted to see in public service. And here's a few um, uh, of the observations that I outlined in 2015, capable of taking a whole system approach, generous about the contribution of other agencies, surveying the horizon to understand new challenges, open with the data needed, um, taking responsibility right at the end for service performance before the failure becomes an issue. Um, you know, those are, I'll leave those there. I'll be sharing the slides anyway. Um, but, you know, in many respects, I think some of those things still apply, if not all of them. As a result of that work, we then developed uh, a set of public service values through Academy Wales and well-being delivery principles. We were drawing on the work around the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act and the Social Services and Wellbeing Act, uh, which went through around the same time. Uh, and those principles, I think, and values still hold good today. I'm not going to go through them all. I'm sure you'll be familiar with those. Um, we talked then about adaptive leadership and the need for it in public services. And I think it's probably important to situate uh, this conversation in the context of the public service challenges that we face. And I've called them the A, B, C, D, E of public service challenges. Uh, we've had austerity since 2010. It's been intensified uh, in recent years post pandemic. I know it was a brief respite from uh, austerity. We face uh, the consequences of Brexit, whatever you think about Brexit. You know, there is no question that uh, we lost a substantial amount of money in Wales uh, from, the, from the loss of European Union funding. We have the legacy of COVID, and I heard people talking about that uh, to a degree in the in the breakout session just now. We have a new challenge, devastation, I'll call it, war in Europe. And of course, we have an ongoing challenge, the environment, the climate crisis. So how we build adaptive capacity remains a really important challenge, I think, within local government, within public services in Wales more generally. And I take a broad definition of the concept of public service leadership. Leadership is the activity of any citizen from any walk of life mobilizing people to do something, says Ronald Heifetz in his book, Leadership with No Easy Answers. And that means leadership can come from anywhere. Now, you all work in a political environment. So one of the first important things is to know your political space, know your space with your political leader. 
Um, and this comes from something that's quite old now, the Code for Chief Executive Excellence in Denmark, 15 years old, but it's a very good set of recommendations. The first of those is clarify your managerial space with a political leader, and it's an important starting point working in a political environment. Values matter and having a sense of purpose matters. I've tried to break that down into three key statements, really. Ronald Heifetz, values help us to screen reality. There's so much coming at us. How do we make judgments about what is important and what really matters for us, for our organization, for society? And if we're gonna really focus on what matters, then I think we need to reflect on what we're about is creating public value, as Mark Moore put it in his 1995 book. And this isn't something you do once it's important to restate it. You need to state and restate the story about the moral purpose, says Sir Michael Barber in his book, How to Run a Government. Michael Barber was head of the delivery unit under Tony Blair. He has con continued to advise governments on delivery right up until uh, the present government. In fact, the first person ever to tell me that Rishi Sunak was one to watch was Michael Barber about f uh, four years ago. In this context, stories also matter. Um, if I'll go down the left first and then come to the right. In the social media world, everyone is an expert. So it's important that you as an organization know what your narrative is and is clear, uh, clear about it. Back in 2016, the media academic Clay Shirky following the Republican convention that adopted uh, Donald Trump said, we've brought fact checkers to a culture war. Facts matter, but how you present them, how you tell those st your stories matters. And again, from Michael Barber, you need a story. Data on its own is not enough. People, of course, learn through stories. We can learn from each other and from ourselves. And stories or narratives can tell us if our plan is coherent. I once junked an entire policy on young people not in education, employment or training after I read a speech that had been drafted for me about the policy. It, the speech didn't convince me and I couldn't see how it was gonna, gonna convince anybody else. On the right-hand side, we have adjusted our approaches to public service delivery in recent years by listening to people, by listening to the citizens experience of services, understanding how getting the, the, the service that they need appears to them, the kind of labyrinth that they have to go through sometimes to access uh, support from different kinds of services. And I think digital has helped that because uh, breaking down the user experience has been a core to the development of many digital approaches. So we're in a political environment. I've tried to summarize in recent years what I was looking for from my officials in government. Um, clarity, I'll come to the Ch Churchill statement on the right in a moment. Honesty, no surprises, understanding, you know, what the difficulties were right from the outset. Real thoroughness in analysing problems, including how we were going to solve them right down to delivery on the ground. As I say, a coherent, logical story. Presentation of options, not second guessing the judgments that I might make. Uh, adaptability, certainly not running on autopilot because we've always done it this way. Pace, well, we've all had to get used to a vastly enhanced pace during uh, the pandemic. Uh, coherence again, political priorities that fit with the strategy and budgets that are aligned with them. I heard somebody saying that uh, budgets could sometimes be a problem. I'm sure that's true. And then contextual analysis. Our organizations have been around for a while. Um, in the case of local government here in Wales, you know, they've been around for uh, decades. Uh, but sometimes we're not so good at learning from our own past. On the right is a, is a memo sent by Sir Winston Churchill to uh, cabinet ministers not long after he'd become prime minister in 1940. To do our work, we all have to read a mass of papers. Nearly all of them are far too long. This wastes time while energy has to be spent in looking for the essential points. So he gives some recommendations and then at the end he says, reports drawn up on the lines I propose may at first seem rough as compared with the flat surface of officially's jargon, but the saving in time will be great while the discipline of setting out the real points concisely 
will prove an aid to clearer thinking. This is something I always make my students consider before they hand in their essays. If leadership comes, can come from anywhere, sometimes we need to try and let people lead. Um, and here's a, a few quotes in support of that. Ashley Williams, um, in his role as captain of, of the Welsh team in 2016, every day I try to be a better leader for the team. In other words, recognising that leadership doesn't exist in a vacuum. It, it's about how you relate to others. But you also need to ensure that within your organisation there are simple systems uh, that people can come to understand. Joy Ballard was the head teacher at Willows, which and the star really of educating Cardiff when Channel 4 brought that to Wales. And this from uh, quite a well-known, I guess, um, book, Why Should Anyone Be Led By You? Successful organisations seek to build leadership capacity widely. Okay, we saw, I think, a lot of adaptive public service during COVID. A number of you have mentioned that both in the plenary and in the breakout session. And I think there is a genuine fear about whether we are losing that adaptability. Um, and I've had this in conversation with, with students on our Masters in Public Leadership who came um, from a variety of backgrounds, some local government, many from the health service, that they had been freed to act. Uh, but now some of those old systems were coming back. But I think we saw the best of public service during COVID. I interviewed a number of public service leaders in Wales in the summer of 2020 as we were coming out of the first lockdown um, in preparation for teaching my module on our, our MSc in public leadership that autumn. And Paul Matthews, your chief executive, had these things to say, amongst, amongst others, uh, when I interviewed him about, you know, the real purpose of public uh, service in this context. Um, really powerful statements, I think. Um, a recognition that uh, the public servants had the, had an opportunity to protect life, um, that it was a test to people's genuine adaptive leadership. And sometimes people compare public service unfavorably with commercial organizations. Um, without recognising that they have different objectives and different responsibilities. So I always like to use this quote from President Obama shortly before he left office, speaking at a conference in October 2016. Government will never run the way Silicon Valley runs because by definition, democracy is messy. Part of government's job is dealing with problems that nobody else wants to deal with. Uh, and I think you will all recognize that. Public service is messy. Uh, it's always going to be messy. We shouldn't run away from that. So some final basic comments of, of learning, you know, that I can, I've kind of absorbed and feel are still important um, in public service, wherever it, it, it's being practiced. It's important always to keep your eye on the big picture. It's easy to be drowned in uh, the day-to-day -day necessities of accountability and reporting. So you've got to try and remember the important as well as the urgent. Uh, I appreciate that's difficult, uh, but it's something we all need to try and find space to do. We can overcomplicate things ourselves, so it's important to keep things simple. Curiosity matters, as Lisa said at the beginning. And curiosity means that you should not be afraid to ask the stupid question. Somebody in the room has to ask the stupid question when you're trying collectively to find a solution. You need to make time for forward thinking, and that's not always easy to do, but it's critical. Otherwise, you will never manage to remember the important as well as the urgent. Crises are opportunities. We saw that during the pandemic. I think public service here in Wales really rose to that challenge. It was extraordinary. Um, I think, you know, people moving into roles they'd never done before. Um, but against the notion of crises, sometimes we can create problems, but we should see failures as a spur to change. Organisations also need to listen to the mavericks. It doesn't necessarily need, mean that you need to act on everything the mavericks say, the ones who disagree, 
uh, but you need to value cognitive diversity and take what you can from learning uh, from uh, those who may have slightly dissident views. Leadership in public service is always about explaining things. So you always need to have a, a narrative and particularly in the social media age, as I say, where everybody's an expert. So I've always said to people, and this is true, whether you're doing media interviews or whether it's uh, you're talking to colleagues or, or you're talking to people who work um, in, ostensibly in the uh, job structure for you, always know three things about why you're doing something. But you are not the organisation. So always have a project, invest in yourself, invest in your development. And that means never stop learning. Happy to take any questions. Thank you very much, Leighton, for taking us taking us back and moving us forward with some of those those challenges. Never stop learning. Stories matter. And I think your your challenges, um, particularly like your list in terms of what you were looking for from from um, officials, I think was the word that you you put there. Has anyone got any? Oh, the, I I can see some questions coming in. Um, Joe, would you like to come off mute and, and pose your question, please? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, uh, Joe Carter from ServiceWorks. Um, uh, many of the things that you've just mentioned in the basics require a level of psychological safety to be in place in the team and the organisation. Um, what are the current levels of psychological safety in public service organisations um, and how can we make it better? Well, I think that's a real challenge for leaders, isn't it? I mean, that is a, a question about culture, about where people feel safe, um, where they feel uh, that they are enabled to challenge, where they are enabled to lead, where they are enabled to question. Um, and, and I think if I went back 10 years ago, um, and I think about, let's take local government as an example, if I think about the local government leaders in place on the whole 10 years ago, the model then was very much command and control, I think. Um, uh, uh, then their organisations were having to face austerity. It was much more difficult to dictate things in that, that old fashioned way. I think we've seen a new generation of leaders, uh, uh, political leaders in local government who are uh, more interested in, 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 a, in a different kind of culture, um, in trying to find solutions and in a very practical way. Um, and so I, I, I think that, you know, I, my observation overall is that broadly speaking, that culture is changing away from command uh, and control. But I can't speak for every organisation and nor can I speak for how it feels for people within organisations. Yep. Um, but I think, you know, you're right to raise that because it is it is critical for people. Thank you both. Um... I think I'll offer the last question to Robert Jameson. Cheers, Owen. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Leighton. I just uh, wondered if you could share any examples of effective adaptive leadership, kind of real world, tangible, effective uh, adaptive leadership in action. Well, I, yeah, I mean, I, I, my instinct is that we've seen um, that demonstrating not least in the pandemic so you know let's give it let's give a couple of examples wales was the only country in the uk um, which developed its own bespoke digital model for uh, the rollout of the vaccination program for example um, which it was based on um, a uh, framework that they'd developed um, those involved in this this is within um, digital um, health and social care wales um, uh, for, for, for an entirely other purpose. Uh, uh, in England and Scotland, they were buying, you know, expensive kind of consultancy led programs. In Wales, they adapted a, a scheme that they'd already developed. I think that was a very good example. I think another one is how during the pandemic, um, people were switched in roles. So Test, Trace and Protect was launched, for example. Um, and a lot of people were moved out of their existing roles uh, into that program. 
Um, and it, it's inevitable, isn't it, in that kind of crisis? Policy development is not going to be your priority. So quite a lot of people who were working day to day and things like policy development uh, moved into test, trace and protect for that, that period. Now, um, there was some kickback, I, I know, from working with uh, NHS planners in the autumn. They, some one or two of them were saying, well, it felt a bit sometimes like our skills were being um, weren't being recognized this was being devalued to a degree but i think it's inevitable in those kind of crisis situations that you are going to see a level of of change in in that respect um overall you know i i am i i am clear myself i think that digital has been a, a boon whatever the problem social media may sometimes cause for us um, and we have seen a lot of adaptability through people applying some of the principles that exist in uh, creating digital services, starting with the user experience, plotting your way through, starting small, scaling up, um, uh, not trying to design the entire program from scratch, but working in an agile way. I think that's been beneficial. I think we're starting to see that percolating through into other ways of doing business. Thank you, Leighton, for that that captivating um, presentation and for the questions. Really appreciate your input.